Lesson number two, fermentation. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain that microorganisms can be cultivated in fermenters to produce useful substances. You should also be able to explain that DNA can be transferred into microorganisms. A microorganism is a living thing that is so tiny it can only be seen through a microscope. Bacteria, yeasts and molds are all examples of microorganisms. Scientists cultivate or grow microorganisms in a liquid that contains nutrients and a source of energy. This liquid is called the culture medium. The scientists must control the growth conditions carefully. If they do this, the microorganisms will reproduce very quickly. Some types of bacteria can divide into two every two hours. This means that after just two days, one bacterial cell could produce over 16 million cells. After three days, this number could increase to over 60 billion cells. As they grow, the microorganisms use up the nutrients in the culture medium and produce waste products and other substances. This process is called fermentation. One use of fermentation is making wine or beer using yeasts. The yeast is given sugar. It uses the sugar as a nutrient and also as a source of energy. The sugar is broken down to leave two waste products, carbon dioxide and alcohol, ethanol. When making wine or beer, the alcohol is the product that is wanted. However, fermentation by microorganisms can be used to produce many other useful products, not just alcohol. To do this, the microorganisms are cultivated in tanks called fermenters. The nutrients and energy source that are added depend on the type of microorganism used. Some microorganisms use different sugars, such as sucrose or glucose. Other nutrients, like amino acids, may have to be added to the fermenter so that the microorganism can use these as the building blocks for proteins. Some microorganisms will not grow unless certain minerals or vitamins are added to. Microorganisms are grown in fermenters to make many different products. Fermentation of milk by bacteria is used to make yogurt and cheese. And microorganisms are used to make other food products like vinegar and soy sauce. Microorganisms are also used to make a range of different enzymes needed in industrial processes, for example in the food industry and in biological detergents. Molds and other bacteria are grown to make antibiotics such as penicillin, which is used to cure infections. These are all examples of fermentation. Bacteria and other microorganisms contain DNA. They use the same genetic code as humans and other organisms. Scientists can make the bacteria produce new products by changing their DNA. First, they identify a protein that is needed as a medicine, such as insulin, which is needed to control diabetes. Next, they cut out the section of the human DNA that is used for making insulin. They then put this piece of DNA into the bacteria. The bacteria now contain the gene for making insulin. If they are cultivated in a fermenter, this will grow massive numbers of bacteria and produce lots of insulin. In the past, insulin had to be extracted from animal organs. Using fermentation is a much better method. Some medicines and other useful products are now made in this way, such as enzymes and human growth hormone. Dr. Kiki? Hi, I'm Dr. Kiki Sanford, and today on Food Science, we are talking about fermentation. Strictly speaking, fermentation is an energy-producing process that does not require oxygen to take place. It's anaerobic in nature. Bacteria, yeast, and even human cells use fermentation to create energy in the form of ATP from sugar. Some organisms, like the bacteria that can get into canned food and cause botulism, or that lives in rust and can cause tetanus, will die if they're exposed to oxygen. They rely on fermentation for all their energy. Others use oxygen but can switch to fermentation if the environment demands it. Still others don't really care one way or another. So, 
To break it down, what? Cells take the simple sugar glucose and split it into a compound called pyruvate through a process called glycolysis. Then, depending on the organism, the pyruvate can go down one of two different fermentation pathways. In human muscle cells and in the bacteria that help us make yogurt, pyruvate gets converted into lactate. You might call it lactic acid. Thank you, little bacteria. <laughs> Yum. The other pathway is used by single-celled organisms to convert the pyruvate into carbon dioxide and alcohol, something animals have been taking advantage of for a long time. Eat the little berries, get a little junk. I'm a little birdie and I'm gonna land in a trunk. Humans have harnessed the fermenting power of Saccharomyces cerevisiae, a type of yeast for bread making. The yeast ferments the sugar added to the dough, creating carbon dioxide, which makes the bread rise by creating lots and lots of bubbles. The gas is forced out of the bread, but the spaces left behind by the air bubbles give us that fluffy, porous final product. We can take advantage of yeast's sugar addiction for more kitchen fun, like making carbonated ginger ale, because that's what you would do, right? That's what I do. So first, with a funnel in a two-liter bottle, you're going to take a cup of white sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of yeast. Use bread making yeast that you can get at a grocery store. It's convenient and it works just fine. Take your funnel out and shake it to distribute the yeast throughout the sugar. Then we're going to grate one to one and a half tablespoons of fresh ginger. Add more ginger if you like it spicier. Take the ginger and just stuff it in your bottle. Then add the juice of one lemon. Meyer lemons work great because they're pretty sweet. But, you know, whatever lemon will work. Arr, squeeze it! And then I get to do it again. Squeeze, squeeze. to be strong to work these things. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. There we go. Add that to the mix in the bottle. And shake it again. Mix that stuff up. Put the funnel back in. And then Fill the bottle almost to the top with water. Cap it. And shake it again. This time give it a really vigorous shaking. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it in a bowl or shake it in a tub. And then you're almost whole. That was a silly song. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. When you're done shaking it, put it someplace warm, not hot, for 24 to 48 hours. The yeast will do its thing, take up the sugar, and convert it into carbon dioxide and a little bit of alcohol, but not so much that you need to worry about getting buzzed. However, you do need to be concerned with how much CO2 is being formed. Too much, and you might end up with an exploding soda bottle. So check it periodically by squeezing it with your fingers. When you can no longer dent the bottle, it's done. Stick it in the fridge to chill. The cool temperatures will slow down the yeast metabolism and the fermentation process, keeping you from having to clean up a giant mess. When it's sufficiently chilled, strain out the ginger. And drink. Mmm, tangy.